Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and today I have a special guest. It's Magnus Dundonell from the McMurra Distillery. So thank you for being here and you are one of the founders of McMurra Distillery. Yes, that's true. One of the eight founders. Mm -hmm. uh, from the day one, the idea in 98, in March 98, uh, all the way to now I have been the CEO of McMurra. So I pretty know everything uh, about the story and how, how we have proceeded. Okay, so for all of you, what's going on today, we will have a live show with Magnus Sundanel and you're able to ask questions in between. And behind the camera, there's Ben and he's looking after the chat and will ask questions to us when it's time well to answer them. And first we will discuss a little bit about the distillery. Uh, then uh, going through the sequence, we will taste today. And then we're going through pictures of the distillery, which I took in 2015. So there is a little change where you can probably tell us about. And uh, then we will go into tasting of all these four whiskies. And in between there will be more pictures of the distillery and more detailed information you're able to tell us, which we, well, you do not find on those bottles uh, on the back. There's a lot written on the bottles on the back, but there's more. So uh, it always takes a few minutes until the audience builds up. And uh, so first, uh, let me ask you a few questions about the history of the distillery and uh, you talked to me in the start before the camera runs um, that you had a well a first plant I know of but you also had a, a small experimental distillery perhaps you, you start no, with the beginning in 1998 was it yeah that's true we, we decided after the first idea was this was a ski weekend in, in north of Sweden where we brought single malts the eight of us and mm -hmm. so we had a great whiskey buffet and wondered there uh, why isn't it a, a distillery in, in Sweden? A uh, single malt distillery should be because there's a lot of interest. Yeah. And someone late at night ca came up with the idea. We don't. We are not sure who. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so so someone came up with the idea. Why, why don't we start a single malt distillery? In the mm -hmm. first one in Sweden. Yeah. So um, a lot of friends do these crazy ideas in on the nights. Mm -hmm. uh, some spirits involved. But we couldn't let go of the idea, we couldn't uh, lose the idea. So in the morning, three of us or maybe four decided to start to meet uh, in one's kitchen and try to do a business plan and an activity mm -hmm. plan, what to check okay. to do a single malt distillery. Mm -hmm. And then you uh, had a first building, which is completely different to the new one. I visited the new one, I didn't see the old one. And no. there you started your experiments. Yeah, that's also why uh, the, the name uh, McMurra came up, because after the idea we'd start to, to look for the first really, um, what's the b birthplace of Swedish uh, whiskey? We, sh we should find a place where we, we built the, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the distillery and the recipes and everything, develop it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we looked uh, around Stockholm, because all were living in Stockholm at that time, and, and uh, uh, 180 kilometers north of Stockholm, that's uh, the town of Gävle, where it's, this is my hometown. How it's called exactly? Yeah. Gävle. 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 Oh, I always pronounce the G, so it's wrong. Gävle. And, and outside Gävle uh, is the, the village of uh, Makmyra, mm -hmm. uh, where my parents still live. So, so it's good for me. I, I'm visiting them quite a lot mm -hmm. in the work, but I must stay overnight and so. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's, uh, and uh, during the last 20 years, so I've been up in Gävle and Makmyra, maybe uh, once or twice every week. So, so uh, but, but I, st I uh, live in Stockholm. Uh, uh, so we have a off Stockholm office and, and the distillery in, in Gävle. Okay, uh, Ben, could you uh, bring the, the map? Please. Sure, sure. So now the map is coming and here you can see the so southern part of Sweden. On the right hand side there you can see the Stockholm and those 180 kilometers, it's a little bit more than 100 miles for our US visit uh, yeah. viewers. 
And on the right, you can see Finland. And on the very left, this is Jutland from Denmark. On the upper left is Oslo from Norway. So you can see it's, well, it's quite remote, but it's still reachable from Stockholm. And there's the highway going there. So it's quite uh, easy, isn't they, it? They, they built the highway 2007. So it was uh, uh, easier <laughs> from 2007. So this has been 21, 21 years of driving a lot of, of uh, uh. times uh, between the, those two cities. Yes. Okay. Um, then uh, I visited the distillery in 2015 and it was running then for, I think, four years, something. And it's in the new one and it's one of the, well, the most advanced technical distillery I've seen. So you're an engineer, I'm an engineer, so uh, I'm able to honor that. And uh, it's wonderfully untypically built so it's in a tower it's a it's a seven eight nine story tall building nice ah, 37 meters 37 meters so it's above 100 feet uh, so it's quite tall ah, we had a, um, uh, this is actually the third distillery we built a mm -hmm. really small experiment plant first mm -hmm. developed the recipes and then we 2002 we, we built a full-scale distillery in the old Macmira uh, building mm -hmm. uh, and then in 2009, 10 and 11 and 12 we had this big project to do uh, uh, on our own land uh, a new distillery because of capacity reason both for visitors and mm -hmm. also for for uh, production uh, so we did uh, we had the chance to do it right from day one the yeah. right environmental uh, climate smart way and and, mm -hmm. and the dream was to use the gravity force yes yeah, so it's from from the from, the, yeah, from the top to the to, to the bottom mm -hmm. uh, and here you can see on this picture this the uh, this is the center outside we had wonderful weather then so it was northern early summer uh, we will have a look inside that uh, at the very end of this presentation. And the next picture, please. So here, this is a view I took. You see the distillery is located inside a forest. Yeah. It's wonderful. And the distillery itself is behind that tree. So yeah, and, the, and the <laughs> earth is not, it's not earth there, it's the, the peat. It's the, the peat. This, this picture taken from, from the smoker. From the smoker, yes. So and the, you can see the, the chimney of the power plant. You have this biofuel power plant. And we move on to uh, the distillery. And this is this wonderful distillery. Uh, from the uh, one side is completely full of glass. So you can see all the distillery equipment on top of each other. Yeah, uh, it's uh, interaction from both from inside, so you can actually you, you distill among the treetops, uh, <laughs> but you can also, as a visitor, see the production from 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 the outside. Yes. So 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 it's in it should be in the middle of the forest, and it is. Yeah, and on the top there is a, a balcony, and from that balcony uh, you can have a wonderful look around into the forest, and this is your power plant. Uh, yeah, it's a power plant, 100% uh, biofuel, uh, so it's a closed distillery. We have no sewage. We reuse everything. Uh, all organic uh, waste go to a natural gas uh, facility. And, and uh, um, for heating up, we use uh, wooden ships mm -hmm. uh, from the forest. This is quite uh, typical for Sweden. You have a lot of wood there. So. Uh, I actually heard that we have ten, uh, 60 billion trees in Sweden. That's a <laughs> lot of trees. <laughs> lot but of you trees. see that from the top of the distillery. Uh -huh. But the, the ah, power... Ah, yeah, here, here's some of them. Yeah. Uh, this is the view, I think, to the Baltic Sea and those tall buildings there is close to the shore, aren't they? Uh, yeah, that's the city of Gävle, and, mm. and uh, actually, uh, that's my favorite church there you see in the middle. <laughs> but uh, um, behind that, that's the, the uh, one of the uh, paper mill plants. Mm -hmm. We're doing the ca uh, cartoons on, on these uh, uh -huh. gift boxes, so, okay. so we actually can see a lot of the raw materials from the from the top of the city. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the power, the electrical power that you get from a uh, hydropower plant? Uh, it's a small river just beside the, the, the distillery and mm -hmm. uh, maybe 500 meters uh, downstream mm -hmm. it's, a, uh, it's a hydropower plant. And so that's where we get our green energy from. Mm -hmm. uh, and you just need, if I'm right, just need the energy to bring your uh, 
your grains, your, your malt, uh, up to the top level and then gravity goes on itself. Pretty much. We have to, to, to help it a little, little bit, bit, but, but we, we have a, a, a really good percent of saving energy Jeez. in this, uh, this uh, plant, if compared to the old ones. The old ones was good also, but it's about 45% better, better in this one. Yes. So in former times, if you look at the uh, 1900 distilleries, uh, they were built always at the hill slope, and they went with a uh, horse carriage, up the hill and then everything goes with the gravity downwards so I find this idea to have it in a tall building I uh, find it wonderful. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah because Could you are an engineer also. Yes. <laughs> this, this is like an art I really like that yeah, also. Yeah. So then um, we talked uh, about which whiskies we would like to to taste here in front of the camera and uh, there were four of them one was a hidden one which wasn't released yet and the other ones uh, came out and there you told me there are four main uh, taste profiles taste profiles uh, and we are lucky to have one of those each here probably not that lucky <laughs> it was intended to so uh, <clears throat> we talked about the sequence and I had already three of them here on the cask during the tasting and uh, there's this Swens Eck Eck means oak so the Swedish oak then this very new uh, AI, artificial, artificial intelligence whiskey. Then this is the, how you call it, winter soul? Winter, winter. Uh, soul, that's winter sun. Winter if sun. you translate it yeah. to English. Yeah. Uh, and then the Swens Rec, and this is uh, the pleated one. A Swedish milk, uh, if you translate that. So, mm -hmm. so it's, uh, it's uh, and that's the fourth um, taste line here. So it's representing uh, the oak, Swedish oak, the more elegant style, uh, the uh, the innovative finish with fun uh, uh, finishes, and then the Swedish milk is is special. Try to do um, uh, something new to the whiskey community when we when we first started, and here are some of the results. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we're close to a quarter of an hour into the stream and uh, well we will start with the first whiskey, the Swens Eck. And this is also done in Sweden. It's not a Chinese box. No, 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 oh, no it's uh, all, all, all uh, <laughs> local uh, raw materials. All materials and um, this is all uncolored until filtered and all have your standard ABV of 46.1. Yes, that's the most common one that we have. Yeah, and it's now, this is very special. This is 10% Swedish oak. So Swedish oak is from the taste profile a little different to other oaks. Yeah, it's more herby, it's uh, more forest-like and it's a different style from, from, mm -hmm. from other oaks. So it's a new taste to the whiskey. Well, I think we have introduced it when we introduced it. And, and this is the introduction uh, uh, product in that taste line. If mm -hmm. you're going on all, all Swedish oak in a small cask, that's <laughs> oh, then <Too> much. <laughs> all, all, always black after three years. So it's, ve it's very, it's very uh, powerful and very wow. lot of color from, from the uh, oak. But 10% that's enough to get the, the, the idea of the taste profile. Mm -hmm. So here we go. First whiskey, three to, four to go, <laughs> three to go after that. So here we go. It's always uh, fun to see how good they, they open. Very good. And that the cock will always be good. Hmm. Yeah. So we do not finish our glasses here. Uh, because we will have a comparison at the very end, so stay tuned. Uh, we will work out the differences between those whiskies uh, in the end. Oh, here we go. Okay. I hope they. All right. So, we have uh, the main whiskey comes from uh, ex bourbon casks, and then do we have a mixture or a finish with the Swedish ah. oak? 
Yes, we after uh, four or five years, we we uh, we um, um, uh, finish it in in hundred liter uh, barrels. So, so it's very small, small. S- s- much much smaller. So it's getting more powerful finish in the end. Mm-hmm. And and uh, some of them are from uh, Swedish oak then. So th- wha- that's where you introduce the, the Swedish oak. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's um, quite powerful in the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the, the maturation. Yeah. Skull. Skull. <laughs> oh, you yeah. just. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I don't told you that uh, we first sniff. Oh, yeah, but I was so thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> so, we talked here for about an hour and had no whiskey at all. <laughs> so, I find it quite fruity. You should. That's uh, one of the characters of, of the basic basics in Macmillan. Mm-hmm. And it's what it is: apple, pears. Uh, yeah, but then you have this herby uh, sense uh, mm-hmm. that I was talking about, mm-hmm. the forest feeling After from that, from yes. from, uh-huh. from, uh, from the, the Swedish oak. If if you're going deeper into the glass, then you get more of this herby character here. Yeah? And some vanilla, yeah. Yeah, of course. It's, uh, because it's a bourbon cask That's base great. also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and and quite a lot from from the color is coming from from the Swedish oak because it's so so, so po- powerful and new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now we have a sip. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it's also because we we were. Uh, um, um, we skål, eller? We, we said skål. And yeah. A skål yeah, means uh, drinking? Yeah, yeah. So ah. Swedish, when you do a skål, you drink. So that uh-huh. was a, you know, a, a reflex it's reaction. Reflex, oh. okay. <laughs> skål. Skål. <laughs> mm-hmm. There is this intense oak. This herby taste on my tongue, very intense. Yeah, deep. Full. You know, this is like uh, one of my sh- children. So, 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 so I, I love it obviously, and mm-hmm. drink it a lot, and over the years also. So, it's uh, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So it's extremely intense for having no age statement on it. So you. You did not put the age statement on it because uh, it's still one digit years old, so five, six, seven years. Something like that, more, more uh, six, seven uh, nowadays. Mm-hmm. So, okay. so it uh, have developed in age a little bit over the years also. So mm-hmm. it's, it's a quite good uh, age deal right now, but we, we choose not to put the, the age yeah. statement on our stuff. Yeah. We have done it once or twice, but, mm-hmm. but mostly we, we go for, for uh, the good taste. Yeah. And these uh, Swedish oak casks, they are smaller. Uh, we, we, we used uh, the small casks all the way. Uh, we were using 30 liters, 100 liters and 200 liters. And, and that's one of the points of maturation. The time is important. Mm-hmm. This, the, 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 how new the barrels that's are right. important. How uh, how big they are because how uh, how often the molecules are hitting the wall well, yes and then the environment on the warehouse mm-hmm. uh, so there is uh, for our viewers uh, the uh, the relationship between the inner surface and the amount of liters of uh, whiskey in the this inner surface matters and the smaller yeah. the cask is the bigger in relationship the inner surface of the cask is and the more often the molecules interact yeah, with the that's, cask. That's pretty much yeah. true. And we, uh, the Swedish oak uh, wood, we also char it very heavily. So it's, uh, it's very heavily charred. Char. So this ha- very heavily charred, typically people think about, oh, now it has to be smoky. Oh, no. Oh, no uh, it's, it's, uh, it's active charcoal, so it takes out every sharp feints might be in and there. Influence the, the parameters of vanilla and toffee and, 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 mm-hmm. and, and th- those kind of flavors also. Yeah. So uh, the heavily charred means uh, the whiskey matures f- 
faster in heavily charged casks because those unwanted substances are absorbed faster. Yeah, very good. This is an intense one. Uh, well, we, we talked about in which sequence we go. And um, the next one we will have after the next uh, pictures. Uh, I found it a little bit more elegant and not that intense. I did not remember how intense this act was. Probably true. This is intense in in this direction, also yes. the, the Swedish oak direction. So, mm -hmm. so it's intended to to get the the the, uh, the the person that that try it to to get a feeling of the Swedish oak. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, and not to to get too much whiskey, I keep that in here. All right. <laughs> and uh, I follow you, Dirk. Uh, <laughs> sip of water to neutralize our mouth and now we're heading for the next uh, picture and this is, looks weird this is a standard uh, container uh, in which you build your smokery oh, that's, it was a that, wonderful that, place that, that's actually true if you <laughs> uh, if you think you we are only a, a technology company but a very modern distillery well just beside it we have this 100 percent handcrafted <laughs> moldings with with, uh, yeah. with this, uh, sea container smoking that's a perforated plate there yeah. you see yeah and this is a r r uh, not a 40 foot it's a smaller shorter one 20 20 foot container mm, yeah yeah and uh it looks weird, so we have the next picture, please. Uh, this is the container, and uh, you see the hot air coming from this acron generator or whatever. So you have the, the green barley coming up, that transporter. Yeah, and the green barley from the transporter yeah, right. going down from the top. And, and we spread it on the perforated plate and, yeah. that, and then heat it up on the. Yeah, there was a, uh, a guy there, not too big because he always went down in that and this is our, our smoke smoking guy uh, yeah Hoban. and he was smoking <laughs> not with a cigarette but he <laughs> he smelled from this extreme ashes burn it was uh, ex extremely so you're, you're, yeah, you're a doing lot a lot of ppms in it yeah, uh, we are doing is re it's really really heavily s uh, smoked, uh, but we just using one third in in the uh, in the mix than mm -hmm. when we distill it. So the 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 uh, the standard uh, smoked recipe is one third smoked uh, uh, malt mm -hmm. and two thirds not smoked, and then the extra smoked is two thirds <laughs> smoked and one third. Okay, one smoked. but we do not in uh, oh. go very much in that because we will have. Uh, the wreck at oh. the very last. So this is uh, a picture of the malt you get from local farmers in the area. Yeah, and then and then uh, smoked in that uh, oh. uh, that um, uh, kiln there, yeah. the so handmade. You, you looked after a um, barley company uh, with, uh, which smokes in Sweden, but you didn't find one. Oh, we decided earlier to just use Swedish ingredients and, and local ingredients as mm -hmm. much as possible local. So you're closer to the distillery, the better. Yeah. So the smoked barley uh, come from, from the farmers around the, the mm -hmm. distillery, and then we malt it, floor maltings. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Small mm -hmm. one, and then smoke it. And we have done all uh, smoky whiskey uh, from day one with only Swedish smoke. So that's that's the, the last one we're going to try. Yeah. But that's mm -hmm. also a new taste to the whiskey world. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is the view to the distillery from the back. And there are the stairs going up where we went up. Uh, we didn't, th we took the elevator downstairs. But we've seen how the malt uh, is stored in bins there in those oh. uh, the two, tubes, two, two green bins, bins there, yeah. are small bins. And one is for the smoked and one for the not smoked. Yeah. And uh, in between you mount up the stairs and uh, yeah, go a little further and there you see that this blue machine uh, is there for, for lifting uh, the barley up, isn't it? Yeah. And from there it goes to the left inside the building and from then it goes by gravity. So this is the only uh, part where you need additional energy to bring the barley up.
Yeah, and here you also meet the, the malls if you are a visitor in the sky bar, and then you go out on the balcony mm -hmm. and you can meet the, the barley before the malt before it goes yeah. down. Sky bar, I forgot about that to tell. It's <laughs> wonderful looking above the, the forest, and, and if you then have some, some midnight sun, I think it's wonderful. Yes, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Okay, so this was the second part of the presentation and now we're moving forward to this artificial intelligence crafted single malt whiskey which uh, Angela Dorazio uh, told me about. Uh, I visited her, I, I met her at uh, Rudolf Schenke, this uh, heavy rock guitarists from the Scorpions. Oh, that's uh, a, a rendezvous. <laughs> yeah, so it was wonderful to, to see that house and uh, we had a tasting there or we had a talk there. So uh, there is it here on whiskey.com. So have a look at uh, uh, Angela Dorazio and, and the name McMurra and you will find that video on our channel. Yeah, uh, please have a a small introduction to this whiskey. Uh, what is artificially intelligent with this whiskey? Oh, that, that, <laughs> that's a long story, but, but uh, 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 the easiest way to say it is that it's a, a good tool for the master blender uh, to, to uh, uh, analyze uh, different uh, types of, of recipes and different kinds of, of um, um, uh, reviews on, on our, 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 our bottlings. We have done 25 block bottlings so far and so if we analyze and take in information about those 25, 75 uh, bottlings, uh, we can combine that with the recipes and then we can, with help of the, this tool, we can uh, pick out the, the <coughs> most best combinations ah. and new combinations. So this is a, well, a multi-dimensional analysis of the components, yes. uh, of, of the recipes and the outcoming components. So if we from day one had a small group of, of uh, con future compute com consumers that help us uh, develop the recipes of the Swedish mm -hmm. whiskey, this tool can uh, can use the whole world to to uh, to uh, to um, get the information and combine it what with, with bottles like this one, mm -hmm. uh, and then analyze it and suggest uh, new recipes uh, that we can, and then we can add some preferences and some specification, and the the I uh, I uh, or, or I tool is 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 learning a little bit, mm -hmm. and and come up with another set of of, of uh, recipes, and then uh, Anila. Master Blender, try try them, and and uh, get the f some feedback to the to the tool again, mm -hmm. and then in the end, uh, uh, this recipe was came through and uh, was the, the winner. So this is AI01. So it's the first one. Yeah. So we can expect more to come. Probably uh, because it depends a little bit how the world will 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 accept uh, that accept this mm -hmm. this whiskey and the idea of using uh, IA as a tool also. Mm -hmm. But uh, the specification on this one is to do a whiskey that uh, many people like to uh, to taste and uh, and uh, mm -hmm. think is good. Not too harsh for those. Not too weak. Not in in not in a specific direction, but but uh, a, a soft whiskey that uh, many people would would like mm -hmm. to drink. Th then I uh, googled a little bit about the company names uh, I found on your website. So is it the, that this tool was developed by Finnish people? Uh, yeah, the, the technology is made by Forkind, that's a, mm -hmm. a small Finnish consultant mm -hmm. uh, company. And um, the computers were uh, offered by Microsoft, wasn't it? Yes, so, so, it's, so, so it's a, a combination of, of um, it's a cooperation between three companies, Macmira, Forkind and Microsoft. Okay. And Macmira and Forkind is so, so, so small. <laughs> uh, they, so they are bigger. <laughs> but it's a, good, it's a good group together. We, we mm -hmm. do have done a very fantastic job, I think, yeah, to, to get this program from, from idea to, to uh, well, the result uh, is uh, this whiskey. Mm -hmm. So, have a sniff, no score. <laughs> no no score. <scope. laughs> There's this fruity main character, of course, in it. 
as we had before. Yeah, that's that's McMurray yeah. uh, as, as a base. And I have a little bit of, of sherry cask in it. That's true, because uh, um, a lot of people like our sherry recipes. Mm -hmm. So that's also the reason why uh, the, the, the AI tool comes up with uh, some, some extra sherry in it. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me uh, how much sherry is in it? Is there 10% or 15%? Mm, or? I don't have that uh, information. And if I had it, uh, well, it's a secret, ah, so, so okay. th then I have to kill it. <laughs> so I, I would suggest uh, uh, it's quite an amount because uh, if I compare it from the color with the egg and the Swedish oak is turning it that dark, then there must be a decent amount in it. So it's my guess. <laughs> uh, and that's true because you, you feel it. Uh, yeah, you, feel you can it. smell it, yeah. And, and it's kind, it's friendly. It's and, and almost in all our recipes, there's a small hint of smoke. You don't feel it, but it's in, in, in the base, like you do uh, cook food and you have some, some spice. Mm -hmm. You don't like to have it come through, but mm -hmm. you have to have it uh, as a baseline, as a spice. And so it's a little, little. You yeah. So get it a bit, little bit more complex. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course it's a little bit of Swedish oak, but not as much as yeah. this one. So on the other uh, nosing, it was a lot more spicy in the nose, herbal. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> Mm. Mm -hmm. This one, this, yeah. This is Give sorry it. to start with. So this is mouth watering. This gives a little sweetness. It's real sipping whiskey, uh, and uh, some spicy, probably peppery notes on the tongue. Uh, really running into my mouth. So it's it's asking for a second sip immediately. So it's dangerously sipping whiskey. Yeah, I actually was uh, surprised. Uh, I find it really, really uh, uh, fantastic to drink. Uh, it's a whiskey that you can drink too much. Ma ma <laughs> yeah, maybe, ma ma but many times you you, yeah. you go, won't get tired of it because you can find new new stuff in it all the mm -hmm. time. It's a bit soft and yeah. sipping. Yeah, and it's uh, well showing a little citrus note as well in it. So there's many facets in it. So this one is very direct, the egg, and this is much more complex. But in the end, on the tongue, the same intensity as the egg has. So it's, it shows oak as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So it's wonderfully complex for a younger whiskey. So it's as well mixed from whiskies below 10 years of age. Yeah, also maybe it's a couple of casks that are a little bit older, uh, but, but most of them are, um, and a few is young, but, but most of them are around seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And it's both small casks and mid-sized casks and bigger. And when I say bigger, I mean 200 liters. So that's yeah. quite small. <laughs> Not sherry uh, cask. Yeah. No, yeah. it's 100 liters. We use a lot, but there's a lot of 30 liters in this one also. And then the the smoke, um, the is, uh, taste f from those are very intense. Yeah. We will see in the next uh, our visits. Uh, 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 the next minute, uh, how the warehouse is looking inside with the different sizes of casks. Yeah, question? Okay. We have a question from uh, Kresmir Jeltik. Uh, which McMurrow would you recommend to someone who has never tried one? Oh, um, uh, you should probably start with the core range. That's, uh, that's the uh, uh, Brooks whiskey that we don't have today uh, in front of us, but I think you have it. Uh, the Brooks yeah. we have, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the Svensk Ek and the, the Smoke. Those three are the basic components to start to explore Macmira. Then, then, then after that, of course, it's interesting to go into 
this uh, innovative Finnish style and, and uh, the AI if you are especially interested in, in, in that kind of project. But just to start, the Brooks is also the cheapest. For yeah, the first yeah. I, I would recommend the Brooks. That's uh, have also the story uh, screen printed on on the bottle. So we have, mm -hmm. you know, been uh, living with with the Brooks whiskey for a very long time. So that's mm -hmm. our uh, first recipe. I so I say. to tell a little bit about the prices for the start, this Swens Eck uh, is on the continent on Central Europe is around forty euros dollars pounds. Uh, the intelligence is a little higher, it's about 60. Uh, the winter sole is a little cheaper, but it's in the 50s. And uh, the rec is at 35. Uh, yeah, but I think it's it's a 0.5 liter bottle. Yeah, so it's similar. So it's similar from the price to the other ones. Yeah. yeah. So, and the Brooks is a little bit cheaper. Okay, here we have a question about the maturation. Brian Campbell. Well, they don't pour sherry into it, do they? It sits in a sherry cask, yes. How long in the cask? Uh, this is the the, um, uh, the uh, finish, could be uh, one year, one and a half. It's a little bit different, but uh, um, as the finish side of it, uh, where we do it on smaller casks, 100 liters. So one, mm -hmm. one and a half year. Okay, and there's an, another few things coming up about the United States. So, is there any whiskey going to the United States from you? Uh, yes, we have uh, uh, one, one uh, importer that helps us, Craft Lion. Uh, we have just started and it's uh, actually the, the first edition. That's the, um, the, the one um, before Svenski Ek, similar but, but not the same. So and next whiskey going to be Svensk Ek uh, on, on place in, in, in US. And maybe it's going to be more than that. But it's a little bit different because difficult because it's uh, um, you know, no, it's a one liter or 75 centiliter bottles. And, and we have 70 centiliter and 50 centiliter. So it's a new platform for us. That's why it's quite tricky. Mm -hmm. I have a question that you have to read. Because I can't read it. Do you, do, can you read that? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, hello, Magnus. Are you a member in uh, in Old Jens? Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Could be, maybe. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's the question. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're finished with the second one, and uh, well. We will not finish in an hour, but so we're good in time because we have a little bit more of time today. Um, so I put it at a second so that you... Yeah, yeah, uh, you have to keep... Uh, yeah, so first, second, third, fourth. All right. Then. Yeah. And uh, now we're going to move forward. So this is on the uh, one of the upper floors where the... Uh, the mall comes in, and this is the mill. Yes, it this is, is a fancy new shiny mill. It is, uh, <laughs> and 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 the pipe. The you see a pipe behind the other pipes there. That that's where uh, the the barley, the the mall comes from outside the, the, the mm -hmm. building, and and uh, runs down to to that uh, and quite fast uh, uh, milling process. One uh, about one hour. So that's also because we can run three batches uh, a day, mm -hmm. um, um, 24 hours if we like. We, we're doing uh, two, two batches a day right now. Okay. And this is your mash tun. I'm, I wasn't able to, uh, to look inside because there was some disinfection going on. So oh, you that's keep dangerous. So everything, yeah. yeah. So you keep everything tidy and clean and wonderful looking so uh, excuse me how much tons are in that oh it's uh, around uh, uh, together with the water is going to be uh, about eight tons so, so the structure so has to be quite heavy 
Ja, ja. En är så one and a half tons of malt. Of the malt, one and a half tons. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it's uh, the 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 grist, the uh, the the milled uh, malt is coming down that that pipe there. Uh-huh. And in the front, there's this underback where you can look after, or look for the uh, yep. for the finish, and uh, it's a semi larger, a larger ton, or just gravity. Uh, it, Probably should know that this, but uh, sim- semi louder. I, I I think it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyway, the the uh, it's a fun feature there on the on the left side on the picture is a, a window so you can be able to see the filter cake and that's a little bit uncommon because mm-hmm. that's an important part of the of the uh, uh, the mashing. Mm-hmm. Okay. And here are the fermenters. You have six of them. Mm, actually, it's more. twelve. It's twelve, so, so this it's is only the half one side. Aha, uh-huh, okay. So this was one of the bottlenecks in in the old uh, building. Uh, mm-hmm. We just had four, so so now we have uh, three times that capacity. And they go over two stories, so they are quite tall. Uh, that's true. And uh, how long do you uh, uh, ferment? It's around four days. Four days. So it's ninety-six hours. This is quite long. This gives more. More fruity, more esters mm-hmm. in no, the beer. Yeah. yeah, and how high do you dis, uh, ferment? Up to eight, eight, nine percent? No, it's a little bit lower. Uh, just as the recipe that we first developed, mm-hmm. so it's around six, mm-hmm. seven, six, okay. seven, around that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And this is always wonderful to see a a classical Scottish shaped uh, set of pot stills. In that very modern building, so old meets new, uh, wonderful looking. On the left hand side, the the wash still you can see it by the window, and on the right side, they had a little smaller spirit still, and they are built by Forsyth in Rutgers, or were built there. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But and this was se- the, our specification. We knew the the because we have developed the, the shape over yeah. time. And you went. Uh, you had the small experimental. Stills built from a um, an old Swedish still you found in Stockholm in the museum, yeah, wasn't it? That's, that's true. So so we actually uh, down sh- escape uh, do- down uh, sized uh, that that form uh, nine times. So it was a very small uh, uh, first experimental pot uh, pot mm-hmm. still. Uh, so it's we actually bought copper plates from the beginning and did mm-hmm. shape by shape just as they did in Scotland. Yeah, uh, a long time ago. And then for the final plant, you uh, increased in shape again. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we knew the the the, um, the specification, the height and the how, how the shape would be, and so so so. Uh, and and uh, Forsyth is uh, doing a very nice job there to to construct them, mm-hmm. but on our specification. So you have a very little reflux. There's no reflux bowl. There's no constriction parts, so you are still quite straight up, and the line arm is slightly slowing down. So uh, every part going up over the top will condense and go down. There's yeah. little reflux in it, so this is a quite intense spirit you get from that. And we developed that over time in the first uh, small uh, pilot plant, and then the full scale old distillery. So we knew exactly what we wanted. Mm-hmm. And this still, this pair of stills, was already used in the old still. You had to move that. No, no, oh no! It, These the, are the, new the, ones. This brand new also. So the, it's exactly the same shape in the old still. So we have, um, we, you can say we have double because we have the old one uh, still there. So when demand increases very much, probably you re- you reactivate the old one. That's a possibility. <laughs> yeah. That's a possibility. But here's the, the unique thing here also, you're standing uh, quite high up in the building uh, yeah. to distill. So you have the, the forest just outside the w- windows. Mm-hmm. That's a <laughs> nice feature. Yeah, other, typical others see just a wall from the next warehouse uh-huh. and you're looking into the green. So a wonderful place to work. Yeah. This is what I found very, very interesting. Everything is automated. Everything is well uh, controlled. <coughs> Everything uh, that is not manual is automated. Uh, you know the the the, the, the smoking. The, the, <laughs> the, no, the the the, the handcraft parts like the middle cut, uh, we're okay. doing 100% manually. 
Okay. So that's uh, that's our skilled operators that, that do the, the, uh, the cuts. You're you're allowed to smell. Yep. We open? we don't have a, a safe like in Stock, uh, mm -hmm. Scotland. So we have, so we nose and we taste and we measure the the time and and the strength mm -hmm. and then we have, um, uh, you have uh, samples to to compare with. So you do a mm -hmm. triangular test. Yeah. Uh, to to do the exact right cat and that is made by a, a wall like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So and here we see, but the, but the safety and all the environmental and temperature control mm -hmm. and, and and all that stuff is automated. Is. Yes, and that uh, view is of the condensers. And in front, you see those glasses. There, you can take your samples from. Or what is those yeah, that's, glasses that's for? That's an old style in Sweden. Uh, you call it a, a lighthouse or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, in say, instead of safe, you see the the spirit, and you can take samples from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think this is the last picture of that series of pictures, and now we're going to the next whiskey, and I'm very well happy to have that whiskey here because uh, I haven't tasted it yet. Uh, it's one of the well finished whiskies. This is a uh, port wood finished whiskey, or it's yeah. Tell a little bit. Yeah, about that. Uh, this one is is. Um, uh, finished on on uh, uh, port wine casks uh, cask that uh, we we have uh, transported from from Valado, uh, the port wine um, uh, brand in in uh, Dorod Valley. It's a small uh, brand uh, that used to go into the big brands porch before, but since 20 years uh, they are doing their own uh, port. Valado. So that's the, the port wine uh, we have yeah. do, did, uh, done a cooperation with also. Wonderful color, isn't it? So I like that. So here we go. So it's wonderful, this box where you can see uh, your, your sign here. And when you open it, it goes behind. And so it's very haptic. Yeah, so port wine means more fruity. Input, yes. And uh, what's uh, the the main whiskey before? It's also ex bourbon cask matured. Uh, yes, uh, the, the 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 major part uh, of, of our uh, warehouse is uh, we we have um, started always with the number top selections of, of bourbon cask. So it's mm -hmm. very fresh cask from from the okay. beginning, and then after five six years they are ready to uh, to use for for bottling or to continue to finish on smaller casks so mm -hmm. that's our style and in this time is is was uh, used on on uh, port wine casks yeah, wonderful this bottle and there are those uh, knobs in it yeah they actually represent the eight founders and, ah. I, and I think in, um, this is probably me <laughs> in the very front, <laughs> and then, then in the in on the on, in um, in the bottom you always you have this, uh, this symbol as, yeah. uh, as well. Yeah. So I think whenever a distillery has its own bottle, you know that they are producing more th than just a few bottles. So because developing a bottle and having uh, produced it uh, is really expensive. If you uh, have yeah, small yeah, numbers, you have to to uh, to uh, to um, pay for the form, the, for the, form. the, the, so mo the, the molding form. Yeah. So we we uh, made our own glasses uh, with the form, and we know yeah, okay. you, you need uh, an awful lot uh, uh, of glasses until uh, it pays off, so that the price uh, comes that, down that's from the forms. That's true, because glass is so cold, uh, so so hot, and the the forms uh, have to be really professional. Mm. Uh, it's uh, quite um, a lot more of color to this and that's yes. due to the, the port uh, casks. And it's a little bit more to the red and not to the and brownish and amber. And it's a ruby port that we use. Yeah. So that's very reddish also. Yeah. So I like uh, port wine 
uh, not the port wine. Port wine matured or finished whiskey I like very, very much. Uh, even a little bit more than the, uh, the sherry wines, finished whiskies. And if such a whiskey has a little bit of smoke in it, then it's my kind of whiskey. So uh, <laughs> okay. having some sm mildly okay. uh, whiskey together with a port wine finish, and that's mine. <laughs> So you can have this first and then have the smoked <laughs> yeah, one after. Or I'm doing a, a blend. <laughs> so this is called Winter Soul. So the, uh, the sun of the winter, which is not very intense in Sweden. It's quite... No, but it's nice when you have it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Way, way it could be very cold, but you can... Uh, Swedes uh, um, go out and, and have the sun in the face uh, yeah. in a way. Uh, and I really appreciate uh, the, the sun in winter time. And this is more more berries. This is the port wine influence is there. Little citrus note as well. And I have some some oaky notes. So there are no no Swedish egg in it. Um, no, no, not mm -hmm. in this one. Uh, and it's. Uh, typical, uh, you we're going in a direction with the port, so there's uh, quite uh, uh, quite a clear uh, uh, taste of, of, or a, a nose of, of, of the port wine casks. Does it make a difference if you get these casks fresh and uh, and wet or? If they are lying around for ah, two years and getting very big, dry, that's a big difference. Yes. So, yes. so you need them fresh to to you just pour out everything and then they are ready to use. So then the, the wood is fresh also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Mm. It changes a lot, so it's going to to more dry, to a more dry character, to some drops. Very, very fruity, very berry. Should be, should be. Wow. Wow. We're gonna do that uh, uh, in the end to to compare with others. Uh -huh. but th that's my favorite to go uh, up and down the the the, mm -hmm. the flight. Yeah. yeah because uh, then you <laughs> know the difference. Very the difference. Yes. So we we have typically every whiskey each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, because we add that to our shop system, so that a customer can see that video and say right. he's interested in and say well. What do they, do they say? So we will cut out this tasting uh, right. and put it in there so that they uh, have that's, a that's good. Uh, inference. So, so I try to, to look into it and, and give an, uh, yeah. uh, some ex more explanation. And in the end, we're going over that this, this is also a, a part of our, our seasonal range where we, we do two every year. And this is the winter season whiskey. Mm -hmm. That's hence the name, the winter yes, so sun. But, yeah. but there's also a nice thing to sit down when it's starting to get a little bit more cold mm -hmm. um, and, and have a, a, a whiskey like this. Yeah. A lot of, of sweet tastes. Yeah. Now, the vanilla is getting stronger. And there's a very, very light spiciness in the end. So it's much more uh, comfortable, smoother than the other two, which had this uh, Svens egg in it. So it's a lot friendlier. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah. Al although I think the AI whiskey is also smooth in a way. It's but smoother, but smoother than the egg. Yeah. So the egg is the, the most intense in the moment. And it stands out and go in, in a, a herby direction. Is that, yeah. But that's the, the point also. That's what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. So you can see the color is it's really, really reddish. Yeah, so now the last. Um, yeah, you can't see the name. Winter Soul. Yeah. 
Yeah, also the the uh, the the, uh, the design on this is you know it's a sunset. Ah, uh-huh, so yeah. That's the colors we, of the and and the colors are typical in Sweden on on winter time when it's very um, bluish and and reddish mm-hmm. and and in, on, on the sky when when the sun is setting. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, no, first the fourth video, and then you said, well, now let's go to. Uh, the warehouses, and then you have <laughs> quite yeah, a walk a, into the forest. Ah, that's a trail to uh, <laughs> uh, untouched Swedish forests, and it's yeah. uh, quite nice for 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 people that haven't met the Swedish forest. There's a lot of blueberries, lingonberries, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, pine trees, of course, <laughs> and uh, the history of those uh, uh, warehouses was quite interesting. They were ammunition bunkers, weren't they? Uh, um <laughs> actually not uh, not this one we yeah. have we have okay. a we have a warehouse we have more than one warehouse that yeah. have been ammunition bunkers but this <laughs> one are actually new built okay uh but with uh, the intention of letting the forest grow over it so mm-hmm. the forest will take over uh, in time and then and o- only the the towers will stand out uh, over time uh-huh and uh yeah you can see this this climate control uh, is it for the whole uh, warehouse or only for the the area where the tourists are going through? Oh, it's actually one for every. There's four uh, rooms in that uh, mm-hmm. uh, underground warehouse, the forest warehouse. Uh, so uh, every room have its own uh, its own uh, controlling tower for for ventilation. So, but not to heat it up, but to keep it not too hot in summer. Right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And also to, you see the door, it's, uh, it, uh, we can have a lot of people there, but there's a lot of safety also. So if something happens, there's a uh, safety door to get get out. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, it's very um, um, low temperature, so it's not uh, very dangerous anyway, because... The you, fumes you, are less. Yeah. yeah, you have to go over 23 degrees Celsius to get the um, ignition point for alcohol. But I think uh, you will get uh, unconscious before you, you reach the explosion level. Yeah, yeah. Probably, probably. So I think there's a lot of red tape work in that. Uh, yeah. Um, yo, here you can see casks you typically use. They are uh, burnt on the inside. You can ah. see the charcoal. And this is one of the very few casks which you can see cut in half in that direction. Not the other direction, like uh, <laughs> the, yeah. the, the table we have here, uh, the, cut is, the cask is cut below the visible point here. Um, those are cut in half just in the middle. And you really can see how the, uh, the staves are lighter and the charcoal is on the inside. And you can also see the interaction of the whiskey into the wood. So, so mm-hmm. it's uh, about one centimeter into the wood. Then there you have the typical red layer, yeah. where up until where uh, the uh, the cellulosis were cut off uh, into well uh, wood sugars and then caramelized. Exactly. It, yeah, and uh, those are the typical size of your bigger casks. Those were those. Uh, that was a two hundred liter. The two hundred yes. liter cask, typical expert cask. Typical. Yeah. So and here we see. Uh, you can see the numbers nine and ten. There, are multiple rows of those storages uh, racks in it. It's uh, and we have four rooms, and every room can store one thousand thirty liter uh, barrels. So so there's uh, a lot of rows in each uh, room, and maybe the room is hundred square meters or yes. something mm-hmm. like that. So not that big, but but the, the cask are small and uh, stored. In, in, in shelves like that. Yeah, and you have multiple warehouses. Yeah, we have <laughs> like uh, seven others on different locations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and here you can see those small casks which mature quite fast. And in the back, in the middle, you have this lying 200-liter uh, cask. And there are multiple choices how you well work with that whiskey, uh, as you told me. One is uh, to have a well, base maturation in those casks, and then uh, 
to bring out a whiskey for a customer quite fast. You can fill from those big casks to the smaller ones and bring the taste up yeah. in a shorter time. Pre-stored uh, four years, uh, mm -hmm. then, then one year on the small cask, yes. you have a fantastic whiskey. Uh, but then if you fill new make in the 30 liters, uh, after three years, that's the legal time for whiskey, uh, it's pretty, pretty uh, <laughs> ready, actually, mm -hmm. because it's so small. Yeah. So if you, uh, if you have a new uh, Swedish oak cask, it's, you should take it after three, maybe three and a half years. Mm -hmm. uh, bourbon, maybe four to five years. But it's the best fit before date on the, on the mm -hmm. 30 liter cask, actually. So you can't uh, store it for 10 or 15 years. Yeah. It's, it's, then you have to go up to 200 liters. Yeah. So that's so the inter interesting part. We had some experiments uh, here with smaller casks and we had a three liter cask, something. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, that one was after six months, it was well over. Yeah. So the, uh, it was difficult. So yeah. 30 liter, is a, there was a coincidence in the beginning uh, mm -hmm. because the, the, the positive of the, uh, the output was 30 liters. So, so we made 30 liter casks, a good experiment. But, but then we, we started to love the, the 30 liters because it's easy to follow the, the maturation. You can take samples every third month or something and things happen so fast. Yeah. So <laughs> after, after three or four or five years, it's a fantastic whiskey you have. So that's why we use them so much, both in, in the bottlings and also as private uh, private casks that you can buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. And this is the, uh, <coughs> the cafe from the visitor center. Actually a restaurant and that's by uh -huh. uh, also, uh, well, we use it as a you know, good food pairing to get a whiskey. But it's also the law if you have if you like to serve drams to, to visitors in, in Sweden uh, and an open bar, you, you must have a restaurant to serve food also. So okay. that's that's uh, one of the reasons. And, and because we, we we have that obligation, we, we decided to do a full, full uh, whiskey and food restaurant. Uh -huh. And before the year 2003 or something, you weren't allowed to... to uh, serve drinks because everything has go to the system bolaget. Uh, system bolaget that's the monopoly for selling bottles, mm -hmm. but but uh, restaurants can can uh, buy bottles and sell uh, drams too. So mm -hmm. we have a have a alcohol serving permit. That's what we have in this restaurant. Right. And and mm -hmm. and before uh, this restaurant, well, we y could uh, just uh, use it for for closed groups so very tricky if you are as a visitor come and we can't uh, serve you a dram yeah, yeah everybody likes that and <laughs> now we can that so, so so we are happy again so so in the u.s there are some distilleries in dry country counties uh, where you <laughs> well aren't allowed or weren't allowed uh, to serve whiskey so it's it's really uh, yeah, it's so they similar, want that similar they, they they want the taxes they want the employment but they didn't want to have the whiskey served yeah, okay. So now we're going to the last one and probably the most intense because of the smoke in it, the rec. Rec means wreckery from the fishing. Those is rec means uh, 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 smoke. Uh, yeah, that's smoke. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> and uh, why did you put it into a 0.5 liter bottle and not a 0.7 one. Well, uh, it's, it's enough with 50 centiliter. We use that as a base also. So we decided to do do you. you it's just so so powerful. You don't need so much. Uh -huh. So it's uh, uh, quite enough. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a quick, quick two questions. Oh uh, yeah, please. Brian Campbell, temperature controlled. I guess that's uh, referring to the warehouses. Okay. Are they temperature controlled? Uh, yes and no. The, the, it is quite controlled because it's under uh, earth. So it's quite the um, um, same temperature all, all the time. And it, if it's very hot, we, we use temperature control uh, to get below the, the, the dangerous points again. But uh, most of the times it's around 12 degrees in our warehouses okay. and quite humid. So, uh, Derek Beckman, did you get those racks at IKEA? 
kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, could have, could have, but but no, we didn't uh, actually. <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is from the color. It's uh, it's lighter from the color. So which cask is this from? Oh, this is a, a, a one of the most complex blends that any or master blender do. So, uh -huh. so it's every every different uh, cask pro pro cask probably, but mm -hmm. uh, with different uh, smokiness. So so uh, so this is a real master blends uh, product. Okay, and how high is the the peak level? Around? Uh, yeah, I would say maybe. Uh, 20 okay. maybe medium yeah meters. yeah maybe mm -hmm. 18 or something but we haven't measured that way because you measure on on the malt and and uh, we don't use 100% the same malt in, mm -hmm. in in the bin and uh, what's about the the juniper twigs you talked about yeah that yeah. was in the beginning also what's uh, 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 the swedish uh, smoked uh, uh, style uh, that was a question we we uh, uh, we asked us ourselves in the beginning. So we did uh, a lot of experiments of different styles to smoke uh, barley, to get smoked malt. Mm -hmm. and, and this one came out as a winner after a lot of tryouts with uh, ourselves and also future consumers. Mm -hmm. So it's a crowd sourced uh, smoke, okay. uh, a real Swedish smoke. So Swedish, because they, they write here, or you write here on the label, it was a Swedish, or a, it is a Swedish tradition of preserving food over fruited uh, juniper twigs. Yeah, yeah. So, so we used a lot of old Swedish smoking methods and, and this one was uh, with juniper twigs and with uh, peat from, from uh, the uh, nearby uh, moor. Mm -hmm. and, and actually it's a Baltic sea bottom from the beginning and the land race of the ice age have raised when it the, up to the When the, the ice went, went away, then the, the yeah. ground comes up. Yeah. yeah. So it's 10,000 year old round. round. <laughs> yeah, have it already here in the air. It's really, it's not that, sorry to say that, not that stinky as others are. So I'm always battling a little bit with Ben uh, when the whiskey becomes really smoky. Uh, above 40 or 50, then I'm saying no, not for me. Uh, Medium-sized smoking is, I like that very much. Yeah, and our whiskey may, maybe it's more smoky in the, in the taste than the, in the nose. Uh, uh, yeah, try that if you see I, if you uh, uh, agree on that. I, I think I'm, I had that quite a time ago, so more than two years and mm. a few hundred whiskeys in between. <laughs> so I, I'm. Well, let's see how you say Yeah, say I now. remember, yeah. And when your nose get used to the. Uh, smoke then there's a little oakiness behind yeah uh, it's a nice balance in this one the fruitiness is there uh, yeah. mm -hmm. the the, the uh, juniper that's more of a uh, forest fire style yeah uh, and the peat is not the same peat as in in uh, scotland but nope. this um, mm -hmm. Um, s some some pepperiness in this one, uh. and it's like a tobacco tin. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. like tobacco at all, uh, but when somebody opens a tobacco tin and you have this fermented tobacco not mm -hmm. burning, I like that smoke very uh, that, ah, that right. taste very much. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Mm -hmm. And here again, the oak shines through, gives you the spiciness on the tongue, but not too long. And then the smokiness takes over. Mm -hmm. yeah. Salty flavor on the lips. A long, little long. bit slow, uh, salty, yes. Mm, a long after. So, but this saltiness 
isn't able to come from the whiskey because those ions should stay behind during distillation. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's just a remembrance, or is it comes from the spray from the sea? How far oh. it is away, or? Oh, I think yeah, the smoke, smoky process in, in wow. uh, as such uh, g gives some some uh, mm -hmm. s salty, peppery feeling. Okay. It. It's on the lips, really. Yeah. So I once took <laughs> a few salt crystals, three of them, put it into a whiskey. It was undrinkable. So no, I, the, I the, this remembrance of this salt is so faint and small you can't repeat that by a, by a, by a salt crystal impossible uh, so so i think if you if you like a smoky whiskey and you just remember this is a mid mid smoky uh, dram you're mm -hmm. gonna like it but i think it's gonna work also on those that don't have tried so much smoky whiskey mm -hmm. because you have the fruity flavor comes through and it's balanced yeah and it's not that uh, hospital sm uh, phenolic uh, disinfection smokiness but as I you said a, a wildfire yeah yeah so we are through with those and uh, yeah now we have to go down the flight and say which of them tastes best so this was the egg and this was the AI The AI is better. You think it's so? More complex. Uh, I have a problem to say that because uh, you know this is like my my, my children. Uh, you you can't say that one is better, better than the other. It's just <laughs> different. Yeah, there's more depth in it. Mm -hmm. So this is it, and now the port. So I'm I'm very much on port. So <laughs> probably so this one. So you feel the difference now when you compare? Is uh, uh, the the port is standing out very much for me anyway? It's, yeah, but in a good way. In a good way. If you are um, down to like port today. Mm -hmm. But the AI is more complex still. It's I can agree on that. Uh, yeah. It's complex, but elegant, but complex. Yeah. That's interesting. And the port is very much on my side, but. Uh, this is more rewarding. For me, it's always the time of, of the day or the time of the week or, mm -hmm. or the, my mood or my feeling. So it's a whiskey for every occasion. And I, I think yeah, I'm, a, I'm a happy man because I can choose yeah. <laughs> a lot of different <laughs> Who has styles. its own distillery? Yeah. So I find the AI really standing out. Everybody knows that I'm, I like smokiness, I like finishings, like those two, but the combination, there is a cherry part in it, and there is a very probably hidden small part, as you said, uh, smokiness in it. Uh, the AI stands out for me. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm also very... Uh, <laughs> Uh, satisfied with the, the this outcome of the, you know, a small product from the beginning, but a very very successful one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the port is good as well. Yeah, I like the port very much. So these two are outstanding for me, the new Winter Soul and the new AI, and the AI is more limited than the portwood, isn't it, from uh, the amount of bottles? I, yes, uh, up to now we have bottled uh, 10,000 of the AI and it's, mm -hmm. uh, we have bottled more of the, the port uh, finish. Mm -hmm. uh, so, 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 but on the other hand, uh, the, the, we have still have the res recipe and, and we can maybe repeat, repeat, it, repeat yeah. it, but not too much because uh, there's a limitation in our warehouse. And so also, and, and then we have, case. and then we have to run the the the, the, the process again and through another set of, of recipes. So maybe it's a possibility to do other AI O two. Could be, could be, yeah. Yeah, but I don't promise. Yeah. <laughs> so do we have more questions, Ben? Um, 
just uh, one asking, is it available in the Netherlands? Uh, Probably it will be uh, available. I'm not sure how long the process have gone, but but uh, I think we have a, 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 um, a distribution ongoing there. And for the last whiskey, we had a question: How much ABV does it have for smoky one? It's always forty six point one. Or um, not always those four, but those uh, four. But but, but uh, uh, sometimes like the Brooks whiskey, that's the a Brooks little, is little bit lower. Yes, and then we have. Moments, for instance, that are a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. But most, I remember most of which I had, this was those seasonal uh, whiskies. Yeah. Uh, uh, they were all 46.1. That's mm -hmm. a good number. Uh, yeah. And you, uh, if you go below, you have to, to consider to, to uh, coal filtrate. Yes. I mean, we like to avoid that uh, yeah. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Thank you very much for having you here. Yeah, thank you, thank you, and I'm very honored to be here. I, I really like your, your what you're doing, and, and, and the program is very impressive also, and, and the whole company is impressive. I, yeah, I really like visited, the place. Yeah, you visited our um, our offices here, uh, but you haven't seen our store where we deliver, so it's it's huge. Um, and uh, yeah, we're trying to dig deep into the matter because we have a lot of visitors outside there uh, which are interested in the very details of whiskey. Not only, oh, sipping very good, very nice, I like it, uh, but to go deep into it and uh, tell you them visit why. The, the sites also, you came where, you know, and they did the, the visit on the distillery yeah. quite early. So yeah. that's a And there is a, a video online for the uh, complete visit of the distillery I put together. Uh, so have a look at that. And uh, yeah, I have to tell you that there is a next live stream coming up and it's on the October 25th. We are not quite sure uh, which distillery we will cover. So stay tuned on whiskey.com. Uh, we will teaser it um, enough uh, days before so you won't miss it. If you haven't subscribed to our newsletter, please do so. We will have it in uh, announced in our newsletter as well and thank you for being here. School or school. <laughs>